Okay. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to, I need, I mean, I need help from three people in the audience. All right. And what I need is I need the first person that I see, I need, I'm going to flash my mic and I need you to give me a name of some public figure. Alpha was first. Go ahead, Alpha. Bruce Lee. Okay. Bruce Lee. All right. Got it. We got Bruce Lee. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, Bruce Lee. Okay. Now what I need is I need like an object, any object will do anything at all. I'm going to go to Michael Huey. I saw you flash, flashing first. A basketball, Glenn, a basketball. Okay. All right. All right. Basketball. All right. Got it. All right. I'm taking notes here. And now I need any type of, uh, hardship okay any type of hardship any type of struggle any anything that that humans uh battle on the daily anything like that i see david spies at self-doubt okay self-doubt all right so i've got bruce lee as a public figure we've got basketball as an object and we have this thing of self doubt right self-doubt is the uh the challenge or the trial uh that we're that we're going through okay so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna teach you guys how we can take certain components and we can weave them together to be able to tell a story in a passionate and, and purposeful way that can ultimately motivate people this is motivational mondays i know there's a lot of people that want to motivate people all right so i'm gonna take these three things and i'm gonna put them together and we're just gonna go. It's almost like uh, what do they call it, Alpha? In, in the in the rap world, it's just like uh, you about to freestyle. Free, freestyle. Yeah, we're about to freestyle. That's right. That's right. We're gonna freestyle. All right. There we go. Okay. All right. So here we go. I'm gonna take these things and we're gonna try to tie these things together in a very unique and interesting way. And it might blow up in my. Let's try it anyway. All right. You ready? All right. Ready. Let's pretend all of a sudden Glenn walks out on the stage, right? So here we go. Presentation begins now. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. This was a quote by the famous Bruce Lee I'm sure most of you in, the, in this room, when you say his name, you can picture this thin, wiry, and yet absolutely muscle-toned and mentally strong human being. I remember the first time I ever heard that quote, I thought to myself, man, that is how incredibly interesting is it to think that practice ultimately can make perfect. And for the man that has practiced one kick 10,000 times to be more feared than the man who's practiced 10,000 different kicks by somebody as strong mentally and physically as Bruce Lee got me wondering. You see, at the time, I was roughly about 24, 25 years old, and I was in the auto industry. I was making a name for myself. Ultimately, I had gone from a salesman to a finance manager to a general sales manager at a Nissan Subaru dealership in Flagstaff, Arizona. And my life was moving along as far as my career. I was making money and I was getting the accolades. There were people that were patting my back all the time. But I continually ran into this thing called self-doubt. You see, I didn't know if I was really enough. I had grown up half black and half white. I had some identity issues and ultimately didn't know really where I fit in, which crowd to fit in with. And so what I ended up doing is I found that I would become a chameleon of sorts. I was the type of person who would practice 10,000 different kicks. If I was in a room with a bunch of Hispanics, I'd become Hispanic. If I was with blacks, I'd become black. If I was with whites, I'd be pretend to be white. I would constantly mold myself. If I was with the jocks, I was a jock. If I was with the motorcycle gang, I'd be a motorcycle gang. If I was with the cowboys, I was a cowboy. I always doubted who I truly was my entire life. So here I was in the auto industry. I had done some things in my career, but my life outside of that was in doubt. 
There was relationships that I had that were falling apart, relationships that should have been a priority and they weren't. And I found myself often falling into drinking, falling into drugs, falling into bed with women that I had just met. I found myself doing a lot of things in my life that weren't self-serving. They weren't evolving me. They weren't growing me to become the absolute best version of myself that I could possibly be. Fast forward, fast forward to, to when I was 32, I guess I was 32. Yeah, fast forward to when I was 32 years old. And I was still running around. I was still all over the place. I still didn't really know who I was or what I wanted to do with my life. I still was doubting that I had the ability and the gift to be able to make an impact, to really step into and embrace who I was. And I got a phone call. And that phone call was from my mom letting me know that my father had passed away in his sleep at 52 years old. Now, you have to understand that my dad was a strapping man, about six foot tall and just over 200 pounds. And he had this incredible smile that you could see from miles away. And my dad had played basketball his entire life. He played basketball in the military for 13 years. He played basketball all the way up until the day that he passed away. If he wasn't playing, he was refereeing. If he wasn't refereeing, he was coaching. Basketball had been a staple in his life. Basketball had been the identity for him. He was a huge fan of Magic Johnson and literally played the game just like Magic did and introduced me to the Lakers where I became a Lakers fan. And as a Lakers fan, I fell in love with this guy named Kobe Bryant. And you see, Kobe Bryant was the same age as me. We graduated high school the same year. And here was this kid that was doing these amazing, incredible things straight out of high school into college. He's standing up face to face with Michael Jordan and all these other amazing superhumans and looking them dead in the face without an ounce of fear. Never an ounce of fear in Kobe's face. You couldn't make him flinch no matter what. Even when he went into his first championships, his first playoffs, I'm sorry. He went into his first playoffs and he went to the free throw line and shot an air ball. He went and shot, he went and shot a three-pointer to try to win the game. He missed the hoop. And so as I studied this incredible young man, this incredible young man who it seemed like even in the face of fear, even in the face of, of, of failure, that he of all people, if anybody could doubt himself, it'd be him. And so I studied him and I, I learned, I said, Kobe, how is it that Kobe can be so strong? He can be so purposeful. He can step into who he is and not have self-doubt. Even in the face of all of these people looking at him, expect expectations to be something more than maybe what he is. How is he able to stand in that with zero fear? And it was funny what I found. I found that Kobe was the first one in the gym and the last one to leave. I found that Kobe would practice the exact same shot over and over and over and over and over again. I found that Kobe, even in the face of fame, even in the limelight, even as he made his failures, even as he made his mistakes, he never focused on any of that. The way that he stayed mentally strong was to continue to practice one kick 10,000 times. And by doing so, became a legend. A legend not just in the NBA, a legend around the world, and not just a legend around the world, but a legend for me. And so, folks, I share this story with you because I challenge you, I challenge you to figure out what that is in your life. What is that one kick? What is that thing that is uniquely you? What is that thing that you can identify with that makes you truly who you are? Not what other people hope that you are. Not what someone else told you that you should be. Not what the naysayers or even the promoters push you towards, but that one inherent thing, that divine seed that was planted in you by the God of the universe, the God who made everything. What's your one kick? Practice it 10,000 times and you will no longer have to worry about fear or self-doubt because you will be walking in your truest self. End scene. <laughs>